So how have the Myanmar people been able to fight back against the military, the military who has the guns and everything, the, the guns and the weapons and the vehicles and, and all that jazz? While they've been doing that, like they typically do, um, partly because there's no other option, but through peaceful protesting. Um, and this has been called CDM or the Civil Disobedience Movement. And this really started up um, uh, in the first couple of days just after the, the military coup on February 1st. So what that's involved, the Civil Disobedience Movement, has been, you know, it's protesting in the streets. Um, it has been um, a nightly banging of the pots. This usually happens at eight o'clock every night and people take out their, pan, their, their pots and pans and they smash them. Um, I, of course, haven't heard it with my own ears not being there, but I have videos from many of my friends and it is deafening, absolutely deafening. That kind of goes back to, um, you know, an old tradition of, of, of banging pots on, on New Year's as a way to kind of ward off evil spirits. So you can see the um, how they're connecting the dots there. Um, on top of that, and the biggest part of this has been people not going to work. Now this is civil servants, this is doctors, engineers, um, people who work at banks, um, people who run the railroads, um, transportation, um, uh, the ports. And what this has done is this has ground the economy to a halt. You know, uh, people can't do banking. Businesses in particular can't do banking. Um, there's no uh, exports going out. There's no imports coming in. Stuff can't travel by the train. The, the doctors at the hospitals, they were among the first. And what they did was they just said, hey, we've worked under the military regime before. And we know that, that that is going to involve a lot worse things than, than you know, us not being at the hospital right now. So, um, so this has been the, the, the biggest part of the civil so disobedience movement. It's literally people not going to work. Now, of course, that's a challenge. Uh, people don't have a lot of savings to not be receiving their salary, for example. Some people are, are pretty much just like every day, hand to mouth. So, um, so that's been a, a big challenge for people. And when the end of the month last month came, there was a big push for companies to continue to be paying their staff, even though they're not showing up to work. And for some companies that have been kind of like, you know, essentially making their, um, making their employees come to work, you know, they've been called out in big ways and had to backtrack. And that's included some banks, for example. And, um, yeah, so that's that's a, a big part of the civil disobedience movement. But we've seen other parts too. Um, there was a time, this was you know mid to late February, and the military was saying, hey, if the civil uh, if the civil workers, the people of the government, if they don't show up, um, you know, we're going to go and arrest them. And so what happened was people that drive cars, in particular taxi drivers, knowing this, you know. What they did, like in this very orchestrated sort of way, they drove their cars onto the, you know, the big, the big overpasses in the city, the big flyovers that they have, and <clears throat> they would just sort of like angle their cars in, and turn them off, and pop the hood, and just be like, hey, you know, car doesn't work, and around them would be like 40 other cars that are now blocking the entire way. Um, so, uh, and I saw some interviews for, for some of these drivers and they, you know, <laughs> in a very playful, but serious way, just be like, Hey, um, I guess, you know, my car just doesn't work anymore. I don't know what the deal is. You know, maybe it just needs more freedom to be able to operate properly. That sort of stuff. Um, so we've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, a lot of these things and this, this stuff changing now. In comparison to um, other times, <clears throat> not that it's always been with one main leader, but the civil disobedience movement hasn't really had one leader. And that's made it harder for the military to, to, to stomp it down. 
So there's not one person to catch and then it all ends. Um, people are linked thanks to the internet, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, in a much bigger way um, now. And so these things would be able to kind of pop up and disperse uh, these demonstrations and things like that um, in, in much bigger ways, um, but in a decentralized sort of manner. 